Hello everyone. In this presentation, I'm going to examine Sutta's invention of Kana meditation in the tradition of Wan Buddhism. Kana meditation is conserved as a practical subjective technique by us not only to catalyze enlightenment to the original nature, but also to simultaneously perfect enlightened action. It has been considered the most important meditation technique in the Korean Song tradition over the last 800 years. In the more recent history of modern Korean Buddhism in particular, since the Song Master Kyungho revitalized the Kana Son in the early 20th century, this meditation technique has taken its place as the emblematic Song practice in Korean monasteries. This central meditation technique in Korean Buddhism, however, has not been examined yet in relation to the Buddhist Reformation led by Sotesan, the founder of Wang Buddhism. This connection is especially worthy of attention because there appeal to be some close historical connections between the kind of meditation technique and the method of Sotesan's son or meditation training. Therefore, in this presentation, I will examine how Sotesan understood this technique, how he appraised its efficacy, and thereby how he restructured it in his reformation of Korean Buddhism. Then, how did Sutesan reform the method of Kana meditation? First, Sutesan's reformation of Kana is con concerned with the question of how to make what he considered an elite oriented meditation technique into a practice more easily accessible, applicable, and relevant to the general public. Throughout the history of Korean Buddhism, for most of the general public, Buddhism remained merely a devotional form of practice. Sutesan suggests new reform directions of Korean Buddhism with five agendas in his treatise on the reformation of Joseon Buddhism as follows. To this end, Sutesan modified the radical subitism of Kanasan into the soteriology of moderate subitism, which I will explain in more detail from now on. Under this main idea of popularizing Buddhism for the general public, so that can be interpreted and be defined both the meaning and the specific methods of Kanasan. First, he took the core essence of Kanasan to be the faculty of inquiry or Yongbu, not the generation of the great sensation of doubt, Uzong, by bringing special attention to the importance of questioning in the practice of Buddhism. One thing that we need to notice that the original form of the threefold practice of one Buddhism was developed in response to the subject of inquiry as seen in the title of the section. The three essentials of the cultivation of the mind, inquiry into human affairs and universal principles, and making a choice in action are explained as a subdivision of the subject of the essentials of inquiry. From this fact, it seems to be clear that Kanosan was at the core of his agenda when Sutesan began to undertake the project of reforming Korean Buddhism in the early 1920s. In other words, Sutesan devised Kanosan technique into the three main features, calming the mind, questioning or inquiry, and realizing the calm and wise mind in daily life. This understanding of Kanosan as inquiry or questioning is quite different from his conventional understanding. In the mainstream Korean Buddhist tradition, Kanwa-san is intended to help practitioners shut down all kinds of intellectual understanding or conceptual understanding in order to lead them to the state of non rationative enlightenment. However, Sotetan adopts the technique of Kanwa as a way to cultivate the power of inquiry by which one can achieve rapid clarification of understanding, and he takes intellectual understanding as necessary in order to achieve wisdom and to internalize teaching or to have one's own rational reasoning. In fact, cultivating clarification of understanding and reasoning is one of the most important Buddhist values. Many schools of Buddhism, in particular in yoga Zara traditions, stress the importance of valid knowledge, pramana, which is defined technically as a consciousness that is not deceived with regard to its object. They posit two forms of valid knowledge, direct perception, pratyaksha, and inference, anumana, with the former driving from correct sense perception and the latter driving from correct reasoning. Similarly, 
So Tessa considers all of this capacity as the basis for the practice of making a mindful and righteous choice in action, which help one to perfect one's action based on clarifying understanding and listening. For example, instead of inculcating certain religious regulations or teachings, so Tessan asks his disciple to inquire into the teachings of the scripture, either through their own analysis, critical examination, or by testing them out in their lives and come to their own conclusion to see what works and what does not work. For this, so Tessan adds the phrase of delve into why it is so in its line of exposition of Dharma. For example, it says, when you cultivate your mind, your luminosity of mind will become calm and still. Delve into this why it is so. This is, this is a way to encourage practitioners to enhance the faculty of questioning by allowing them to think about its teaching with their own analysis and examination not merely accepting them by relying on the authority. Through the process of arising doubt regarding his teaching, they indeed begin to internalize it and make it either their own knowledge and wisdom. And there are some other variations of this kind of examples. For instance, belief means to determine your mind between favorable and unfavorable minds, delve into the result of this belief. This example shows us that questioning the result of belief motivates practitioners to actually practice this value in their lives in order to properly evaluate its result. Regarding the negative mental state of greed, they will examine the cause and effect of their own greed in advance and prevent themselves from engaging in, in this negative uh, mental quality of greed. Another variation goes as follows. According to the Buddha's words, Practitioners should save the sentient beings who have fallen into the three evil paths, delve into how to save them. This case is particularly worthy of attention because the focus of the question of why now changed into the question of how to realize the goal of Mahayana Buddhism. Based on this example, it can be said that Sotesa transforms the intellectual obstacles of Kanasan into not only sources of wisdom, but also gradual awakening and eventually realizing the goal of Mahayana Bodhisattva actions in his teaching. Another special characteristic of Sotesan's reinterpretation of Kanasan is that he transformed the three essentials of belief, theory, and the sensation of great doubt the Gao Feng Yue Miao stresses in Sonyo into four essential belief, passionate intent, questioning, and sincere dedication. So Tetan asks sincere dedication as one of the most important driving forces to progress the practice into the three centers, with which practitioners keep motivating themselves to practice until they achieve their initial vow of enlightenment. This unremitting that dedicated mind is particularly important in achieving one's goal because it becomes the driving force to push oneself forward despite the inevitable hardship or failure that people will encounter in the process of achieving enlightenment. Kanasan is also often called a hard practice because it is a meditation technique to concentrate on the meditative topic, Hwadu, that derived from Kungai. However, Sotesan changes the name of Hwadu into Udu, literally meaning the head of doubt, which emphasizes the importance of the faculty of questioning itself, rather than doubt regarding the rhetorical phrases typically employed as Chan Buddhist meditative topics. Keeping a sense of doubt, in whatever one perceives will challenge the way in which one conventionally views and perceives the world and thereby opens up the possibility of seeing the world in a whole new way. His extended uses of the concept of doubt can be examined in more detail by closely looking at the list for inquiry in Suyang Yongu Yoron, which contain 137 cases of topic for questioning. These cases in the list can be divided into two groups. One is to promote mental, verbal, and behavior transformation in accord with Buddhist teaching. The other is to enhance practitioners' understanding regarding human affairs and universal principle. 
The format include a total of 30 questions, which encourage practitioners to practice the Buddhist precepts or to regulate their conduct. For example, it says each of killing, stealing, and committing sexual misconduct is a serious transgression, delve into why it is so. Examining why such a precept is necessary in practice will lead practitioners to prevent themselves from engaging in unfavorable intentional, verbal, and behavioral actions. The letter group, which consists of total 107 cases, can be divided into five subcategories according to its related theme. Buddhism, Taoism, Confucianism, common ideas, both superstitious and cultural and natural phenomena, and the principle of human nature. There are a total of 23 questions that are related to Buddhism, including some kungans and general Buddhist teaching. For example, it says, according to the Buddha's word, practitioners should repay the four great benevolence of both in order to repay the benevolences delve into what the benevolences are. These questions include some of the most fundamental Buddhist teachings such as the life of the Buddha, the principles of cause and effect, six destinies, the original self nature, the cycle of rebirth, the source of blessing and poverty, and Chan Kungan such as Mahakashapa's flower sermon, Dao Dos U Hadu, the purpose of the Bodhidharmas coming from the West, Huangbo's third stroke, etc. One each question respectively takes from the Dongyong Dezhan, Canon of Eastern Learning, Tao Te Ching, and the Lunyu, and the Yi and the Mansu. Some of the most intriguing questions are related to natural phenomena. There are a total of 20 questions asking about the principles of natural phenomena. For example, it says, examine how day and night change. Examine the origin of the sun and the moon. The origin of these questions indeed can be traced back to Sotesan's own questions, which motivated his long spiritual journey during his childhood. Accordingly, it is quite understandable to see this question included in the list of questioning. However, these questions may have some other purposes to develop a scientific understanding and approach toward natural phenomena by which people can break down their superstitious understanding regarding natural changes. Most ordinary Korean people during the 1920s under Japanese colonial rule rarely had a public education. Therefore, their curiosity about this natural phenomena mostly relied on their superstitious understanding, which used to be a source of people's groundless fear or ignorance. By cultivating this kind of scientific approach, people could not only expand their scientific knowledge, but also get away from their own unsubstantiated apprehension and superstitious. In addition, they can cultivate their experimental and scientific spirit in general in everyday life, rather than being ignorant about those phenomena. There are some other unique cases for questioning, which ask practitioners to delve into two aspects of not only natural phenomena, but also philosophical, metaphysical concepts such as good and evil, or the way and its vow, uh, in its virtue or power. The two aspects expressed with two uh, Chinese characters of great and small, Taiso or Da Xiao, can be interpreted in various ways, fundamental and secondary, ultimate hidden universal principle and conventional manifested phenomena, etc. This initial doctrinal concept of great and small is deployed later by Sotesan in the correct canon of Buddhism in a more sophisticated manner. There, Sotesan provides a new framework for inquiry, Teso Yumu, great and small, being and non-being. Through this framework, practitioners will examine their conventional ways of thinking and thereby they will have a chance to step out of their habitual ways of thinking by bringing a holistic view to their vision of the world, the ultimate aspect of truth great, the phenomenal aspect of truth small, the changing aspect of truth being and non-being. Regarding the issue of daily human affair, Sotesan gives another framework of Shibi-Ihe, right and wrong, benefit and harm to be used for analyzing them so that they will be able to understand where their suffering and happiness come from. Regarding the ultimate awakening, 
beyond conceptualization and rationalization that is supposed to be attained through kana meditation, so tetan adds another method in addition to the practice subject of cases for questioning, the principle of the nature, sangmi. While the practice of cases for questioning aims at attaining an analytical understanding of human affairs, the practice of the principle of the nature aims for attaining awakening intuitively, which allows them to understand the nature of the mind from a perspective entirely beyond analytical intellect and conceptualization. Both these methods seem to be in a symbiotic relationship to balance between analytical understanding and non-conceptual, non-intellectual understanding of reality. So Tesan also points out the physiological problem that may result from kana meditation. He sees the importance of meditation practice from both mental and physical points of view. From this point of view, kana's on technique which necessitate the very intense concentration can cause the fiery energy to ascend and thereby cause illness in a practitioner. Accordingly, as a way to compensate the physiological disadvantages of Kana Son, Sotesan schedules separately a time for facilitated meditation and a time for investigating Hadu so that practitioner will gain the efficacy of both Kana and silent meditation in meditation practices without either falling into voidness during silent meditation or causing physical illness. Finally, Sotetan established the sociological system of Tono Jomsu, sudden awakening followed by gradual cultivation, instead of Tono Tonsu, sudden awakening followed by sudden cultivation, which is ideally achievable by the practice of Kanasan. He founds the eight progressive stages of gradual cultivation, starting with beginner's stage, sequentially followed by arousing aspiration, establishing one's intent, cultivation, inquiry, making a choice in action, minuteness, and entering into presence. We have explored how the traditional Kanasan technique was understood, adopted, and be invented by Sotesan in the context of its reformation of Korean Buddhism. In this paper, I have suggested that Sotesan attempted to reform Korean Buddhism by problematizing Kana meditation. In its restructuring of Kana Son, the central issue lies in the main goal of Mahana Buddhism, how Buddhist teaching can catalyze enlightenment and enhance the happiness and wisdom of the general public. Sotesan did not deny the efficacy or the necessity of the subitus technique of Kana Son. He fully recognized that this subitus transformation generated by a powerful sensation of doubt is really only accessible to those who have the very highest spiritual capacity. Accordingly, he adopts a more gradualist type of soteriology by allowing practitioners to generate a sense of questioning during their everyday life, which will enable them to overcome conventional ways of seeing the world and instead perceiving the world in a new way. Through this way, people can gradually change their perception and action. It may be begin with a conceptual or intellectual awakening, but eventually it will lead to a transform transformative perception and to authentic bodhisattva action. Some of significant implications of Sotesan's reinvention of Kanasan can be summarized as follows. First, he changed the emphasis on a cognitive awakening which was presumed to have occurred to only a few Buddhist masters throughout Han history into that of practically applicable awakening in people's everyday life. Second, he expanded and developed the scope of meaning of doubt or question in Buddhist practice from an instrumental factor in aiding enlightenment into an essential attitude to adopt throughout all of life. Finally, he transformed the analytical and conceptual understanding, insight, and knowledge attained through the practice of questioning into an authentic Buddhist wisdom, which will eventually become the source of enlightenment and liberation, and at the same time become the motive force for accomplishing anything in their daily lives. By examining Sotesan's response to this mainstream son technique, we see that Kana son is not an inner topic, but a dynamic 
practice which can still take on new forms that may be even more relevant to contemporary people and society. Thank you so much.